Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splattered Vlog, I'm the Horror Guru and today I'm going to talk about a brand new vampire film called Bit which came out earlier this year. Now for those of you who don't know, Bit is about a transgender girl that moved to Los Angeles and ends up getting inducted in a radical feminist vampire clan. It's kind of like a cross between the Lost Boys and the Craft, only like 100% more gay. And I'm actually surprised at how much this movie flew under my radar because I have a lot of friends in the LGBT community and naturally I'm part of the horror community. So you'd think this would be a movie I would hear everyone talking about. But I guess with the pandemic and the world falling apart and everything, people had other priorities and most likely missed this movie's release, much like I did. And it's a damn shame because this movie was a lot of fun and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's not like the deepest movie ever made. So if you go into it expecting like a dissertation on what it's like to be a transgender woman in the world at large, you're not necessarily going to get that. But if you go in expecting a fun horror comedy about a transgender girl dealing with a lot of issues within the real world, but through a more comical lens, um, as well as some, as well as a horror lens, then, uh, you're going to enjoy it too. Essentially, this is a vampire film for people who like movies like Ginger Snaps or Tragedy Girls or even Jennifer's Body. Horror comedies about friendships between women that also happen to tackle some very real issues along the way. It's a tightrope to walk, but much like a lot of the movies I've already mentioned, this movie walks it pretty well. Even if I'm not really a fan of Jennifer's Body, but that's neither here nor there. But if you're not enticed by anything I've said so far, here are some other reasons why I highly recommend you check out Bit. Number one, it has a really awesome soundtrack that jumps between really cool bands like the Death Valley Girls, as well as an 80s style synth wave score that naturally evokes an atmosphere that's very similar to movies like Near Dark or Lost Boys. In fact, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure one of the actors actually is Bill Paxton's son. So there's another connection to Near Dark. And number two, this is a movie about a transgender woman that is actually played by a real life transgender woman. So this is not a Scarlett Johansson like situation. And if you were worried that it was, worry not. And number three, much like most of the movies I've mentioned so far, this movie is a hard R. So that means there is a lot of the gooey red stuff. So uh, if you like yourself some gore, there is plenty of it to go around. <laughs> Especially if you like to see a whole bunch of rapists get eviscerated, then you're going to love the fuck out of this movie. <laughs> And number four, this movie is quotable as all fuck. There are multiple lines in this movie that have reverberated in my mind since watching it. And I kind of want to watch it again just so that I can cement like the full quotations, the accurate quotations into my mind, because I know I kind of have like a paraphrase version right now because I've only seen the movie once. But needless to say, this is going to be one of those movies that you're going to find yourself quoting after watching and everyone around you is going to have no idea what you're talking about. And you're going to tell them about the movie. And then they're going to be interested and then they're going to go see the movie. And then, you know, maybe just maybe if enough people do that, we're going to have a cult classic on our hands. And I sincerely hope we do, because this movie's a lot of fun. And the fifth reason to watch this movie is one of the antagonists, Vlad. And I do say one of the antagonists because there are multiple antagonists. Let it be known um, because the character of Vlad is a villain and a utterly despicable vampire. But. He kind of feels like he walked right off the set of what we do in the shadows and is thoroughly entertaining as a result of that. So, uh, yeah, the character of Vlad is also on my list of reasons to watch this movie. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, Bit is a true diamond in the rough in this hellscape of a goddamn year. And uh, since my state here in California is currently a Blade Runner apocalypse, um, you know, Sometimes it just feels good to uh, put on a movie and uh, escape for a little while, which is how I felt I did with this movie, even though it does tackle at times some very heavy issues, um, just in a very funny and, you know, kind of escapist way. Huh, it seems contrary to popular belief on YouTube, it is entirely possible to be both a woke film and escapist entertainment. Who knew? And as per usual, I'll include an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And if you click that link and buy or rent the movie with that link, then I will get a kickback from it. And with all that said, let us finally move on to the spoilers. And just to be perfectly clear, we are currently in the spoiler section. If you do not want the movie spoiled for you, then you should pause this review, go watch the movie, and then come back and finish the review after you finish the movie. Because I am certainly not going to be responsible if you feel like I spoiled the movie for you if you continued in this spoiler section. So, you have been warned. 
Okay? Okay. So as I mentioned before, this movie is about a transgender girl who moves to Los Angeles and ends up getting inducted in this radical feminist vampire clan. But what this movie's ultimately about is this girl struggling between the paradigm of the restrictive world that she came from and the new, more liberating world that she's entered that has some hidden restrictions that's not apparent at the beginning, but as the movie goes on, she becomes more aware of its caveats. Which naturally leads to the question of whether or not the new world she has entered is actually any better than the old world she left, and the movie is ultimately her exploring that question. For example, one of the main rules of this clan is the rule of no boys allowed. And the reason why no boys are allowed is because the leader of this clan used to run with a male vampire named Vlad, who is totally not Dracula, by the way. And the thing about Vlad is he had a habit of glamoring young women, turning them into vampires, and then making them essentially his sex slaves for all eternity. Now, he called them his wives. Again, totally not Dracula. But it's very clear they were not really his wives, they were just objects to him that he could impose his will upon. So basically, after spending half a decade of having her will stripped from her and being used as a sex slave by Vlad, the leader of this vampire clan has determined that men cannot have the power of vampirism because if they do, they will use it to do things like that, even to fellow vampires. Which naturally leads into one of the other big rules of the clan, and that's do not, under any circumstances, glamour your fellow vampire. Which, since there are no boys allowed, that means do not glamour your fellow lady vampire. It becomes clear that the ultimate argument for having these rules is to ensure freedom of choice among lady vampires. And here is where we run smack into the big catch of being part of this clan. Because you see, one of the first big reveals of the movie is that the entire initiation sequence that the main character went through to join this clan, it was entirely built upon a lie. And that lie was this. Basically, the initiation ceremony involved her getting bitten by one of the girls and then being given the choice to either take a cure and not become a vampire or to join them, feed, and then live among them as one of the clan. Which on the surface is pretty damn cool. It's like the Matrix scenario. You can either take the red pill or the blue pill and the choice is ultimately yours. Except it kind of turns out the cure was a lie. And had she taken that option, they would have fucking killed her? So the leader of this vampire clan gave the main character no actual choice, just the illusion of choice. And to make things even worse, it turns out over the course of the movie, you find out that the leader of the vampire clan has been secretly glamoring everyone else in the clan in order to keep them complacent and following her orders. Literally the main reason she argued to not have boys be in the clan. Basically, what the main character learns over the course of this movie is that it's not necessarily being a man or a woman that leads to these exploitative behaviors. It's a result of power itself corrupting. And it just so happens we live in a patriarchal society in which most of that power is being hoarded by the men. But that also leads to the very important question of, well, what is the better alternative? Like, if power is going to corrupt, then if you give that power to women, they'll be just as corrupt as the men. So what do you do at that point? Do you just, like, shift into the matriarchal society to counteract the years and years of the patriarchal society? Or is there a third option? And the movie does have some answers to these questions, though obviously not all of them, because some of them are going to be answers that are going to plague us for years. But it does come to this ultimate conclusion that instead of, like, leaving men out or leaving women out, the ultimate conclusion is a more egalitarian society in which power is shared among everyone. So, essentially, a socialist society. And I gotta say, me personally, I'm pretty cool with that conclusion. Now, mind you, in the spoiler section, I've kind of narrowly focused on the through line of the movie, but there is more to the movie than just that. There is all the comedy in the movie. Like, there's some really great funny moments in the movie. Like, for example, there's this one scene in which this team of fascist, misogynist vampire hunters are being hunted by the lady vampires. And uh, when they arrive at the compound, all the alarms go off and the fascist, like, um, the fascist people are all freaking out because the vampires are attacked. 
attacking and they're screaming at each other and they're grabbing their guns and they're all like flexing their muscles and shit. And then <laughs> a grenade comes flying through the window and then blows up the entire compound. And then it cuts to the ladies outside going, why do they always think we don't have weapons? And there are many hilarious and highly quotable scenes like that one I just described. So even if you don't give a shit about any of the through line I've been talking about so far, but that scene sounds very entertaining to you, then you should still see this movie because again, it's fun as hell. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out my channel more directly, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. Anyway, I'm going to get off my lefty soapbox and then fuck off out of here. So peace out, my fellow Gorehounds, and I'll catch y'all later.